there's a lot of these filament dryers on the market now with questionable design. So today we take a close look at one and design a simple upgrade part that can reduce friction and jamming. In a recent video hangout, my patron Daniel was sharing his woes with a jamming filament dryer. And I had this one sitting nearby that I was also unhappy with. So I got thinking, could most of these dryers be improved with a simple, inexpensive printed upgrade? This is a generic twin filament dryer that Soval sent me without asking permission. Therefore, the most exposure it gets on the channel is me whinging about it, so let's go. Here's what it does well. It does heat up to your target temperature and count down for your target time. So you can use it in between to dry filament, but also you can print from it while it's in this state. It also has a rubber gasket that seals nicely with the lid and clamps shut to keep it airtight. And that's where my compliments end. You'd think to turn it on, you would simply press the power button, but that does nothing. You have to hold it down instead. That woes it into life, but all the beeping makes it sound like it's having a stroke. The interface is fine, you press the cog to change between the different settings and then press up and down to alter them. When you're drying filament, the excess moisture has to go somewhere, so to help with that there's this labelled vent on top. But even when I leave it open, a few hours later, moisture begins to fill up on the inside instead of escaping out of the vent. And by the end of the drying cycle, it really is all the way through the inside. Meaning to get rid of it and prevent the moisture from being reabsorbed by the filament, you need to open up and dry it all down with paper towel. But not just the lid, remember I said everywhere. So next you have to completely remove the filament and then get some more paper towel and dry every corner and crevice of the inside. Ideally after drying your filament you'd leave it in an airtight environment but clearly this isn't going to cut it and you're forced to open it up. So the venting is a problem but my main complaint are these filament exit ports. They're designed for PTFE tube to kind of jam in but they really don't fit that well and the tube doesn't extend the whole way through to the inside, which is only going to add friction. And friction is very important because of the poor angle these exit ports are mounted on. Here is a simplified diagram to illustrate the problem that we have. And with this green dotted line, we can see that the port is directed to the center of the spool, which is not where the filament comes from. When the filament is empty, it comes from a tangent of the center of the spool, and when the filament spool is full, it comes from a tangent of the outside of the roll. Ideally, this exit port will be mounted on an angle to average out these two. But it's not, so here's what happens. When the spool of filament is low, there's enough room for it to bend and come the right way out the port. When the filament spool is around 50%, there's less room, the filament has to have a sharp bend and the friction increases. And when we put in a full roll, there's not enough room for the filament to bend to match the port. It rubs on the inside edge of the port and there's quite a lot of friction. Another layer on top of this is that if the filament is not perfectly in the middle, then it's got even further to travel and more bending to do to reach the exit port. So despite the fact that the filament spools sit on some freely rotating rollers, there's a surprising amount of friction when you pull the filament through unless the spool is close to empty. I've seen quite a few filament dryers with this exact same flaw, so time for my solution. So let's say we're stuck with the angle of our exit port. It would be better if we could at least angle it from side to side to account for the differences for when the spool is full versus empty and everything in between. For my solution, I took inspiration from my race car, and what you're seeing here is a roast joint, also known as a spherical bearing. As you can see, the inside is trapped within, but can rotate quite freely, and if we imagine a bolt through the middle, it still has a pretty good range of motion before it hits anything. By 3D printing a version of this, we can have an articulating filament exit and that should mean smoother operation, regardless of how full the filament spool is. Let's fast forward to the finished first version of the CAD, and we're not going to dwell on this design because it has been updated to make it easier to edit. The main thing you need to know is that this can articulate and swivel in any direction, like the bearing on the car, but it is limited to around 10 degrees in any direction from center. It took about 4 iterations to get to this working version, for instance, the initial version was way too loose with the spherical part moving around too much. The second version fixed that but the threads weren't correct. The third version had the nut clearances spot on for the exterior thread, but the PTFE fitting was too tight to screw in properly, so it wasn't until the fourth version that all of these were spot on and everything worked as you would hope. With the design established, let's talk about the required hardware. 
you're going to need that pneumatic connector. And I have built up a lot of these spare, but only two of them were actually correct. Ideally, what we're looking for is a version that's wide enough for the PTFE tube to go through. But the threaded section on the one you're seeing here is way too wide and bulky for this application. What we want is a PC4 M6. The PC4 relating to the 4mm PTFE tube and the M6 relating to the thread on the end of the coupling. These are super common, but there's one requirement that most of them don't meet, and that's that they're not passed through. The bore is too narrow for the tube to pass the whole way through. Searching somewhere like Amazon, it seems almost impossible to find ones that pass through, or at least if they are that version, there's not enough information to know for sure. Fortunately, if we head to AliExpress, we can find the exact version that we're looking for with a narrower M6 thread and big enough bore for the tube to go through the middle. They're also extremely cheap at $6 for 10, so if you're buying these, just make sure you have the M6 thread version selected. If you really want to make do with a standard PC4 M6, it is possible to drill at the end with a 4mm drill bit. But please keep in mind that you need really good alignment, so use a drill press if possible. It's also a nice idea to use a countersinking bit to clean up the inner edge. Also make sure that you give everything a good clean to avoid metal debris from getting where it shouldn't be. Once you're finished drilling and cleaning with sufficient force, you should now be able to get the tube the whole way through the inside, which is what we're aiming for. Personally, for six bucks, I preferred to buy the right fittings, but it's good to have another option. The only other tool you'll need to install this is a larger drill bit to open up the existing hole in your filament dryer. The widest part of my design that goes through the case is 12.5 millimeters, and that number was picked, so you can use either a 13 millimeter or half inch drill bit. If you want, you can only use the wider drill bit to enlarge the hole, but this is not going to feel very precise, and I think there's a greater chance of the case cracking. So instead, what I'd recommend is a step drill to open up the smaller existing hole. Using one of these will keep the hole centered and open it gradually, which means less chance of cracks. In my case, I opened it up to 12 millimeters and then used a 13 millimeter drill bit to do the last part. Whether you're getting it in Imperial or Metric, these are another inexpensive tool that I'd recommend as they're suitable for a range of jobs. From this point, I'm gonna assume that you wanna build your own. So let's go through step by step. Most people will head straight to printables and download the ready to go version. But for those that wanna customize, here's some instruction. After this initial version that was frankly a bit of a mess, I modeled the whole thing again, but this time use variables so you can make edits very easily. There's a step file on printables, but honestly, it's easier to make a copy of this document. Let's say you wanted the total width to be wider, so you have something more to grab onto. You would double click on that variable, input the new number, and then hit the green tick, and the shape should update reflecting the changes. We can see that the top boss, as well as the hex nut, have both increased in size to suit. Let's say you print this, and the thread between the nut and the main body was too loose. Well, you could edit the nut thread clearance variable and lower the number very slightly. The same goes for the PTFE fitting thread. You can alter the variable as you need to. Let's say you want to grow the whole thing and drill a much larger hole. Let's update this to 15 and see how well the design adapts. We can see it's a little bit too thin in some areas, so there are limits as to what you can change here. However, by changing other variables to match, for instance here, I changed the thickness of the spherical section, we've got our proportions back and a much bigger version. If you click on the Assembly 2 tab, you can do some testing. So you can click on the inner section and then rotate it to test the range of motion. And we can see in this altered version that we've doubled from 10 to 20 degrees for our range of motion. Great on paper, but this version does need more space and a larger drill bit, so make sure to keep these factors in mind. When you are ready to export, make sure you select inner and outer at the same time, as these will be printed print in place and we need them as one object. The nut can then be exported separately. When it comes to printing, there's only a couple of things you need to check for. The first is to print with a finer layer height to get a finer resolution on the threads. The second is to switch the wall generator to Arachne rather than Classic, and that's because there's some pretty thin sections where we want even coverage of plastic. And the last is to make sure you have a good amount of wall loops or perimeters for strength. You won't need any support, but it's possible that you will need a brim. And that's because this inner section has a very small contact patch with the bed for the first layer. It's a small print, so try it without a brim at first. And only if needed, try painting on a brim or mouse ears to the most sensitive parts. This will hopefully give you the grip you need to prevent the whole thing from falling off the bed. Finally, filament choice is important because the dryer will get hot. So at a minimum PETG, or perhaps something like ASA or nylon to cope with the temperatures. To proceed post printing, you first need to remove the old port from the dryer, 
and then open up the bore to 13 millimeters or half an inch, either is fine, as we discussed earlier in the video. Doing this with the lid open should limit debris, but either way, make sure you clean it all up. It's worth mentioning that if possible, you can drill a completely new hole that will better align with the spool, but I didn't have that luxury. As for the printed part, I would recommend screwing on the nut, just so you have something larger to grip for the following steps. You can then introduce the PTFE fitting and ensure that it's perfectly straight so the thread can engage. At this point, the inner section will probably break loose, so take advantage of the notch on the inside to fit a flathead screwdriver and hold everything in place while you screw the fitting in the whole way. You don't have to do it now, but I think it's easiest to insert the tube, ensuring it passes the whole way through, so the end pokes through a couple of millimeters. You also might like to do some articulation to get rid of any high spots that cause friction. Remove the nut, feed the spherical port through, and then tighten the nut on the other side to hold it against the lid. If you haven't already, push the PTFE tube in so it's sitting just proud on the inside. Exactly how much you poke it through will depend on how much space there is inside your dryer. Now, as before, you can feed the tip of the filament through the port and out through the PTFE tube. Test the articulation for the final time, and then you'll probably want to let it sit in the position of least resistance. Hopefully, as you pull the filament through, you'll have a noticeable reduction in friction like I did. Even a 10 degree relief can make quite a difference. There's one last part that I've uploaded to printables, and it's a little grommet that will block the end of the PTFE fittings for any ports that you're currently not using. And that's my cheap and hopefully universal solution. And I've put a lot of effort into making it customizable. So please alter it as you see fit to suit your needs. Let me know in the comments, is this design of use to you, either for a filament dryer or perhaps another project? Thanks to my patrons, Daniel and David, for the conversation that prompted this idea. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.